Welcome back, Frack Crew. It's Frack Daddy Barbecue. And you know what that means? It's Frack Daddy Fridays. So, guys, I've been kind of wanting a little bit of taste of home. And a taste of home to me is pork adobada. Now, if you guys don't know what pork adobada is, it is basically a pork butt that's cu uh, cut up into cubes. And then we're going to slow cook it in some New Mexico red chili. So guys, we're going to be in the frat kitchen today. So come on inside and we're going to show you how we make this wonderful dish. Okay guys, so here we have some cubes of pork, just like that. Now there is quite a bit of fat on here. I mean, it is pork. So what we're going to do is we're basically, let me clear some of this out of the way so y'all can see. So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to start trimming some of this fat because we do not need all of this fat in our dish. So it is right around three and a half pounds of pork. And I'm going to be guessing we may take about, I don't know, half a pound of fat off of this. So when we're done, we might be looking right around three pounds. Okay, so guys, so here we are. We're all trimmed up, and let me show you all the fat that I took off. So, guys, this is a very important step. Um, we've made carne guisada in the past, and this is kind of the same trim that we do. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't enjoy biting into a big piece of fat when you're putting all this time and effort into cooking this dish. So, let's get this seasoned up, and I'll show you how we're going to season up the meat. We're just going to use some B&B &B basic salt and pepper and garlic. And we'll just come up here and don't be shy with it. There's a lot of meat. And we're just going to stir it all up. And this way you'll know you're going to get everything coated very nice. And kind of saves you a step of wondering if you got everything all seasoned up in your pot. Okay guys, so here we are at our trusty Lodge cast iron pot. Here we have some olive oil with sunflower oil in it. We're just going to put some of this in our pan and then I'm going to add some bacon fat into here because bacon is flavor. Now that our oil has come up to temp here we're going to have our meat that we cubed up. We're going to throw it in here and start browning it off. So I'm going to say that this is good enough. We're just going to put our pork into a foil pan and then we're going to saute up some onions and some freshly minced garlic. I took my fat that was left in here and I just put it into the foil pan as well. Now we're just going to do a little bit of the same concoction, a little bit of oil with a little bit of bacon fat because bacon adds flavor. Now here we have one large chopped onion. Just saute that up in here. Oh yeah, a white onion so we're going to saute that up for a little bit and then we'll add our freshly minced garlic we've had these onions in here for about five to six minutes here i have about five to six medium to large cloves of garlic i'm going to throw them in here now you don't want to let these cook too long because they will burn now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come in here with some salt pepper garlic and onion to season this part up since everything else has been seasoned, why not season this? Some pepper. We love pepper. Then we're going to take a little bit of just plain kosher salt. And there you have it. Now let's give this a stir. Okay, so now that you can smell your garlic just getting really, really fragrant, we are going to come in and we're going to add our meat that we have in our foil pan, juice and all. Add that back. Make it happy. Come in here and stir all around. I have two cups of better than chicken 
bouillon. We love this stuff. So add two cups of chicken broth. Let's make sure it's all good and mix. So here we have just one bay leaf. Put that bay leaf in there. And then we will, like I said, let this simmer for a bit, kind of come to a simmer. And we'll add our next ingredients. Okay guys, so we actually have a video up of how to make our own red chili sauce. Now, if you're in a time crunch like we are today, we're just gonna go straight for this stuff. This stuff is amazing. You can get this online. You can have it shipped straight to your house with all kinds of other stuff from 505 Southwestern. We will be leaving a link in our description box so you guys can go check them out and see what all kind of great stuff they have to offer. Now what they also do have is they have like a mango salsa, which I think would pair perfectly with some fish. Now maybe one day we'll get some of that and we'll do that. But other than that, this is what we're using. So, I'll just tell you this right now, guys. This stuff smells absolutely wonderful. Reminds me, back home, honestly, eating at one of my favorite restaurants, which is Francisca's New Mexican Style Cuisines. Shout out to the Achondo family. They make some really, really great Mexican food. And if you're in Farmington, look them up. Go in there. Tell them you saw this on Frack Daddy Barbecue. These guys will treat you like family. Okay, so we actually ended up using two jars of that 505 Southwestern red enchilada sauce. Now, we decided to go with two because this is quite a bit of meat. Like I said, it's almost four pounds of meat. So why not just make sure we have that wonderful flavor that we are looking for. Now you can use as little or as much as you want, but we will keep you updated with the progress of our pork atavada. And I tell you what, it is smelling so delicious already. So it has probably been about, what would you say, an hour and a half, two hours, babe? Uh, roughly two hours. Roughly two hours. So we took a little taste test and we think that it needs just a little bit of salt and a little bit of cumin. And one thing that I will say that I really enjoy about using this 505 Southwestern sauce is sometimes when you make homemade red chili yourself, it turns out kind of bitter. And this actually has no bitterness to it. So let's take a look at this and let me show you guys what it looks like. All right, let me show you all what we're looking, we're working with right here. Tell you what, this is looking beautiful. Just need to let this simmer and we're gonna let it simmer with the lid off that way it can start reducing and thickening up and we don't have to add any flour when you do it like this so it's kind of a win-win because we're back on our diet and also at this time if you were going to do it this is when you would want to add some potatoes because traditionally you put potatoes in this dish and since we're back on our diet we're trying to stay away from those so add potatoes at this point and let it reduce and thicken up. You're gonna have a wonderful, wonderful dish. Alrighty. So here is our pork atavada, y'all. It has thickened up very, very nicely. The flavor is very, very good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this off and we're gonna let it, <coughs> excuse me, we're gonna let it cool down and then we're gonna assemble our pork atavada tacos or burritos. So our pork atavada is officially done. It has taken us about three and a half to four hours. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn this off. We're gonna let it rest for about an hour so the flavors can even come together more. And then we're gonna either assemble some tacos or we're gonna assemble some pork atavada burrito, so stay tuned. All right, so here is my favorite part, guys. I am gonna show you how I make a pork atavada burrito. 
but we're going to be using low carb tortillas. So, like I said, normally you would have potatoes in here, but this time we're not. So there's the meat. And nice fluffy flour tortillas. Oh yes, nice fluffy tortillas. So here's some cheese. Now another kind of traditional way in New Mexico that we do this is we make uh, breakfast tacos with this. Um, I mean, this isn't going to probably be the prettiest burrito, guys. But <laughs> thank you over stuff. Yeah, that's kind of normal though. And then we're going to smother it. There you have it, guys. That is a pork adobada burrito. Obviously, it'd be a lot better if we had bigger tortillas, but this is all we can get. All right, let's give it the official Frack Daddy Barbecue taste test. This is, hope it's going to be just as good with low carb, but I'm sure it will. Take the first bite. Mm. Tell you what, it reminds me of being back home at some of my favorite burrito places. Burritos and Moss, uh, Frankie and Felix's Place. And Francisca's. Guys, this is basically a taste of home right here. That green chili or <laughs> red chili is on point. You saw how simple it was when it came to the end. All we added was a little bit of salt, some more cumin because we felt like it just needed that. I'll tell you what, guys, please go check out 505 Southwestern. We're going to leave a link in our description box for them. So you guys can go check out all the great stuff that they have. And also guys, I just want to say I appreciate you guys stopping by, supporting our channel, because without you, we wouldn't be at 1,000, and we're also getting closer to 4,000 hours so we can get monetized. So guys, once again, I just want to say thank you, appreciate all your support, and I hope you guys have a great day.